everyone, um, I'm Natalie Kopp. I'm a tutor from Columbus, Ohio, and back in 2012, I came to the Dickens Universe Summer Conference in Santa Cruz as a high school student through a program similar to the one that you are a part of this year, so I'm excited to get to be talking to you. So today we're talking about chapters 26 to 36. So quite a lot happens in this section, from Pet's engagement and marriage to Henry Gowan, to Little Dorrit's growing affection for Arthur Clennam, to a lot of yet unexplained mysterious business between the Flint Witches and Blandois. And then we get most notably the big reveal at the end, the very end of book one, from Panks that the Dorrits inherited a fortune and can finally leave the Marshall Sea. So when I was reading this section and the book as a whole, but especially this section, I was noticing a lot to have to do with relationships and duty. So whether that be Little Dorrit's almost over-the-top devotion to her family and suppression of her emotions towards Arthur, or Pet's spoiled relationship with her father and rebellious love for Henry Gowan, or maybe Arthur's lack of familial love and support as a whole. So I thought it might be worthwhile to just take a minute um, with all of these relationships to discuss what I thought was one of the weirdest relationships um, in the section, that of Taddy Coram and the Meagleses. <laughs> so chapter 27 is called Five and Twenty, referring, as you know, to Mr. Meagles's habit of having Taddy Coram count to 25 as a way to calm down every time she feels herself getting angry, despite the fact that it's usually his treatment of her that's making her upset in the first place. So I personally find it pretty condescending to hear, hear him always saying, you know, count to five and twenty, Taddy Coram. So I'm wondering whether you think Dickens is sympathetic to Taddy Coram, or whether he's more sympathetic to the Meagleses. Or is he intentionally leaving judgment up to the reader? Do you think Taddy Coram is justified in running away in this chapter? Um, or do you think that she is ungrateful for, for all that Mr. Meagles has given her? In Dickens's world, how people judge someone's actions would have a lot to do with their station in life, and we know that Taddy Coram came from a foundling hospital, so I think it's worth it to take a minute to talk about what exactly that meant. You may think that a foundling was an orphan or a baby left on a doorstep, but in this case it actually meant something a little different. The Foundling Hospital was a real organization in London founded by a man with the last name Coram, and um, it was an organization that Dickens had visited, vocally supported, and wrote about. So the Foundling Hospital was not for orphans. It was actually a place where um, mothers who couldn't take care of their children because they had their child outside of marriage or for some other reason could um, formally give up the child in hopes that the Foundling Hospital would help the child have a chance at a better life. So for these foundlings, it was extremely common that um, they would, the foundling hospital would have them apprenticed in a trade or go to work as a housekeeper around the age of 10. So Taddy Corm's place as a maid for pet meagles was certainly not out of the ordinary. Another side note here is that the mothers who gave up their unwanted children to the foundling hospital were ref referred to as petitioners. Um, which the hospital abbreviated as Pet. So I'm not sure if Dickens had this in mind when choosing the name Pet Meagles, but it seems like an odd coincidence that he would choose this name. So maybe Dickens was trying to say something about whether Pet wanted Teddy Corm in her life. Maybe he wasn't trying to say anything about the name Pet at all. It's still an interesting coincidence, I think. So even knowing that um, the Meagles' treatment of Taddy Coram was not out of the ordinary, I still tend to have sympathy for her. So I hope that you'll think about um, how you feel about this relationship. And um, don't forget when thinking about the wacky Meagles, Taddy Coram thing, don't forget to think about Miss Wade either and how she complicates this relationship even further. So. You made it halfway to the halfway point, the end of book one, so congratulations. Um, now's a great time to think about how characters have developed so far throughout the course of the novel and to make some predictions about what you think is going to happen next. So I hope you'll take some time to do this, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the novel. Good luck. <laughs>